Um, this is a joint work with Michael Lacey, Carlos Perez, and Rodolfo Torres. And um, so I'm just going to go real quick about weighted inequalities. Uh, kind of the natural operator that was first considered for weighted inequalities, the hardy littlewood maxwell operator. And this is um, week 1-1 one, one and bounded on LP. And uh, uh, so the question is what happens when you um, change the measure from Lebesgue measure to an absolutely continuous measure? Well, a certain property of that measure has to happen and it actually characterizes this weighted boundedness and it's called the AP. Um, I can't get this. It's called the uh, AP class of weights. So the weight has to satisfy these conditions. And so what you need is kind of some control over the averages of the weight. And then if P is bigger than 1 over there, that 1 minus P prime, the P prime is the dual exponent here, is a, a negative power. And so you need some control kind of over the reciprocal too. So. The first person to kind of think about the sharp bounds, and um, so if you think about it as if this characterizes indeed the boundedness of the maximal function, as that weighted constant, the AP constant goes to infinity, uh, that the operator should become unbounded on, on weighted LP. And so what you can do is find out the relationship, it wasn't so clear from the original proof between the operator norm and the AP constant. And if you get the actual sharp bound, then you can um, see how the operator norm interacts with uh, the AP constant. So um, really what gathered were these sharp bounds in terms of the weighted constant. And, oh, and I should mention here the little c, um, we're not really paying much attention to. It can depend on the p, the dimension, but independent of, of the weight. And so really where this gains some steam is with the case of singular integrals, and there's some partial results don't known um, due to Peter Michel and Volberg and also Peter Michel for the Berlin, Hilbert, and Reese transform. So there's just three specific cases where the sharp bound is known. And kind of the key ingredients of the proof are, uh, first off, using starting on L2, so that's when that exponent up there, 1 equals 1 minus 1 over P minus 1. And in this case, you can use Bellman functions to obtain the linear bound and then extrapolate from there and you get uh, this, this bound right here. And then to show it's sharp, you need to check on some type of examples or things like this. Um, so kind of the picture is you start at 2 and then you see this nice uh, blow up at 1 because the operator becomes unbounded there and uh, the extrapolation gives you that. So um, one question that's still open is does this hold for a general calderon zygmunt operator if, um, if we replace that? And what we want to do is look at this problem and um, try and gain some insight. So we considered um, oh, sorry, and, and in light of the extrapolation, all you need to show is the case P equals 2, and just like um, the proof for the Hilbert transform, you can get this bound, and it's going to be sharp. Um, so what we can say was the fractional integral operator, so this is the operator that's important for smoothness of function, Sobolev embedding, and these things, and this, um, you evolve against a locally integral kernel, so it's a smoothing operator. It, it's got, it acts much better than a singular integral operator, but the case alpha equals zero is, is kind of formally um, has the same type of singularity as a singular integral operator. And um, so the weighted inequalities, just to start off, were characterized by Muck and Halpin and Whedon, and so there's a, a APQ class of weights, and it's the same type of thing. You need control on the average of, of the weight and then control on the average of the reciprocal to the right powers. And notice for this, one thing that simplifies this is you tuck the weight um, underneath the power and treat it more as a multiplier than a measure, and this kind of simplifies the calculations. And so uh, what we asked was what's, um, when alpha equals zero, this thing acts like a singular integral. What's the sharp weighted bound for it? Um, so first we thought maybe, well, uh, when, and, oh, and I should mention one thing. Um, the, this is an off-diagonal operator, and it, the P and the Q it maps to, it map, takes LP to a 
bigger LQ and it satisfies the Sobolev type relationship. And so um, one guess here is uh, this right here, this guess right here, um, take alpha equal to zero, that means P is going to equal Q and you would get something, of course it wouldn't be a proof or anything, but you would get something that matched up with the singular integral case. But um, if, when you check the examples, this seems not to be not the best bound. So there's lots of other exponents you can plug in alpha equals zero and get um, the same type of thing. So what we started out, our first approach was to look at an uh, off-diagonal extrapolation result. Um, so, and I think the extrapolation theorems are one of the most important applications of the weighted theory in general, but there's an off-diagonal version due to Habure, Macias, and Segovia, and um, if you have a starting point, a P0 and a Q0, and your operator's bounded, say, with a linear bound on, um, in terms of the weighted constant, well, then you can extrapolate as long as you stay along the same off-diagonal, and which case is like the fractional integral operator, and you get this type of growth, sim very similar to the um, P0 equals Q0 case. In fact, that's Rubio de Francia is, is part of this. Um, so the picture, uh, I kind of switched it up a little bit and made P prime over Q the variable since we got the off-diagonal action happening in the P prime over Q. And so if you start out here and then you get this type of growth. So as P goes to 1, um, P prime over Q goes to infinity. And as uh, uh, P goes to N over alpha, P prime over Q goes right here. Um, okay, so uh, what we're able to do is for this starting point right here, we were able to obtain the linear bound, and this kind of matched the thing along with the examples. So we were thinking we we're on the right track here. Um, then the extrapolation, this was what we were able to get. So uh, notice that's Q0 or P0 prime, and the exponent in our extrapolation gives this. And then a little duality argument. Um, usually you think of the dual space of LP mu, say, to be LP prime mu but you can kind of use a different pairing, a common trick in weights, and you get this bound. So I think this is illustrated best with the picture. We started out here at our point. We got the um, extrapolated and then used the duality argument and got this. But what happens is we have this range right here, and the examples go right along the dotted line. We have this range where we're not sharp. So, and I don't know if these techniques can be improved to actually get the sharp bound. So our second approach um, was to invoke some two-weight theory, some a little bit deeper theorems about the two-weight theory for the fractional integral operator. And so Sawyer in 1988 characterized um, the U and the V here are independent of each other, and he characterized the two-weight boundedness for this fractional integral operator and here actually the P and the Q don't even need to be related, in terms of these testing conditions. And I think this is some deep theory right here and, and some heavy duty machinery, but you essentially need to test, you need to show that the fractional integral operator is bounded on this, um, these functions. You need to test it on these functions, characteristics of cubes times your dual weight. And the same thing you need to test it on, for the dual, for the adjoint, on characteristic of cubes and so on. And an important point of this is that actually the operator norm depends on these two constants. And so if you think back a little bit before, actually before he proved the, the strong bound, um, so going back in time I guess, he proved the weak bound and it is in terms of um, the operator norm of the weak is in terms of this dual testing condition that was on the previous page. And so if you combine these two, well, um, this is what you get. You get the strong bound in terms of the two weak bounds, in terms of the dual weak bounds. And so when, now this is two, U and V here are independent, and so when we make U and V the, the, the weights that we want, 
this is what you get, and so you, once you get the strong bound in terms of the weak. So it all boils down to finding a sharp bound on the weak norm. And this we were able to do. Um, oh, there. Uh, what we did, and there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, we use extrapolation. You can actually get the case when um, P equals 1 and Q equals, I think that N over alpha prime, and you can show this bound, and then you can use an extrapolation and strap, extrapolate above, and you get this, and we actually have that it's the sharp bound on the weak norm. And then so we combine this, and we get the strong bound, and we have that this is sharp. And so the um, kind of to come full circle back to things, the reason we looked at this was to get some idea on how to approach the singular integral problem. And so it might be a more difficult way, but I think maybe if one could show, this is unknown right here, um, the strong bound in terms of the two weak bounds for the two weight, plug in the right weights, and combine this with if you had the sharp weak bound, which they've called the linear um, growth conjecture, and uh, this is unknown yeah, um, even for the Hilbert transform for all P, um, oh, yes, it is. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's supposed to be a P infinity. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, because P, P is the... And then, so from here, combine these two things, and what you would get is the, the sharp bound on singular integrals. And that does it. Thank you, guys. I think, I, I'm not an expert, I think uh, the two-weight theory. <laughs> yeah, she, she has the, sh you have the sharp bound for the Haar multiplier, correct? Yeah.